Have you been putting your hand warmer away in the spring and then pulling out something like this or the equivalent of it? Something like this thermocell and sticking that into your day pack so when you go fishing or hiking that you can drive the mosquitoes away? Well, you might be wasting your money and also wasting your hand warmer. So if you'd like to find out why, just stay tuned and we'll have a look at that. mosquitoes start coming out and you probably will turn to something like a DEET spray which I don't have here as a prop, a herbal insect repellent, uh, this just happens to be ours because I've got them around, or maybe one of the heat pads that puts off the fumes of a, an insecticide such as some sorts of pyrethrins or alethrin. Now there's pros and cons to each one of these methods and let's start with the spray on. <clears throat> this because it doesn't have any deed in it needs to be applied about every 30 minutes and it contains active ingredients that are known to repel mosquitoes such as mint terpenes and citronellol which is uh, an active ingredient of it's not citronella it's the main ingredient in citronella that repels mosquitoes and it's also found in a lot of other plants such as geranium and uh, has catnip in it and linalu which also repels mosquitoes so that goes on to your skin and um, it smells it doesn't smell bad but it smells now the other one it doesn't necessarily smell and some of the downsides that people criticize about this type of device is it contains insecticides which are known to be harmful to health and the degree to which is debated however a lot of the research that is cited these days was done in the 80s and uh, that makes me a little circumspect as to um, how relative, relevant it is in this day and age. Uh, the last thing I found on Olethrin was something from the 80s and uh, that means that uh, I, I prefer not to be inhaling that they also don't tend to work very well if it's windy or even a breeze or if you're moving so if you're carrying something like this on you and you're moving through the air it's not going to work so therefore 
you might want a combination of the spray and that. However, there is an alternative. So if you've been buying this or the more expensive thermocell, which really gets to be quite pricey when you factor in the cost of these butane fuel refills and the pads. So, and just a quick note on the pads. The pads can, are saturated with the insecticide material and then there's a heating element which heats the pads up and causes the insecticide or the pesticide to vaporize and give off fumes that repel the mosquitoes. And after a period of time, typically four hours, this pad then is depleted and you replace it with another one. So that's the concept and what you may not realize, which I didn't, and then it kind of dawned on me, that you have the same dynamic happening with a hand warmer. It heats up a pad and uh, normally the pad is just producing heat. However, if you were to place the same ingredients, active ingredients, that are in a herbal insect repellent into your hand warmer and they started to evaporate and give off fumes, then you are achieving the same end as you do with this. So, how do you do that, you might ask? Well, we're going to backtrack and have a look at some thoughts I had on this device, which is the same as the thermocell, costs a fraction of it. These are about $5 if you buy them from China, and they come with a package of the pads included in that price. They're also available all over places like Amazon and so on. Let's look first at the mechanical aspects of these heat pad units. Now with the thermocell you use butane to create heat with these USB devices what you're doing is using electrical power to create the heat. What I have here is a single cell Miller power pack and a Panasonic NCR18650B lithium cobalt battery 3400 milliamp nominal capacity. You place it into the power pack and that would be your power source for your heat pad. So now what you've got is the equivalent functionality of the thermal cell. Now it depends on which butane cartridge you use. I saw some from the earlier models they last four hours and I believe now you can get them up to 12. How long is this going to last on this battery? Well the math on that should be pretty easy to figure out because we know the capacity of the battery. We don't know the draw of this device but that is something that's pretty easy to assess. What we've done now is placed a meter in between the heating device and the power pack which tells us what we are 
drying and I guess it'd be easier hopefully you can see that if not we are drying about 800 milliamps or 0.8 of an amp now rated capacity of 3400 milliamps on the battery would indicate then that you would expect to get a maximum of four hours drawing that out of this battery however the battery will probably shut down before that so if we put in a 25 percent error of safety let's say that um, you might get three hours out of that perhaps so let's say you're out for uh, six or nine hours you would carry the equivalent amount of two or three batteries to keep this thing powered out for the whole time that you're out and you can see now that it's just dropped a little bit below 0.8 on its draw and since we just started this test we've drawn about 35 milliamps so and then if you touch this you can you can feel it starting to heat up now the next aspect is the pad and again if you are uncomfortable and you don't want to keep buying the pads another alternative is you remember we discussed that there are active natural ingredients that will repel mosquitoes and they oxidize and so one method would be to recharge the pad yourself in here we have a blend of mint terpenes with linalu and geranium essential oil and what it seems to be is about five drops of that blend recharges that pad and then when you are out in the field and if you notice a drop in the efficacy of the pad you can apply more of the terpenes as required and already I know you can't smell it but I'm now getting the scent of these terpenes that I've put on and I suppose if I wanted to be more thorough I could do both sides which would be about the equivalent of six drops on each side so 12 drops would appear to recharge that pad so once your pad is done you can recharge it and keep reusing it so this method is obviously a little more economical than the commercial aftermarket products like the Thermacell it also has the advantage with this power pack of course it's a USB power pack from that you can recharge your phone or your GPS device your in reach and so on uh, with this and with your battery packs so you've got that multi-purpose advantage correction another style of insect repeller that is typically found on places like Amazon this one again came from directly from China and you can see this one is drawing 0.46 so about 65 percent I guess somewhere around there of what the other one what this one draws well of course there's no free lunch so that would mean then that um, this one is got more output than this one so this is probably your better bet 
um, now we're up to about 0.5 so 5 eighths of what the other one is and the pad in that it's the same kind of pad as you can see is the other one and that is the other option overall they're about the same form factor in terms of the size that they take up in your pocket so now you ask what's that got to do with using a hand warmer to repel the mosquitoes and again we come back to the fact that this pad is simply heating up the terpenes and the fumes from that are repelling the mosquitoes what you can then do for example one thing that you might do is simply put the pad in there put the head of the hand warmer back on and now the heat from the hand warmer will be doing the same thing that this was doing and that eliminates the need for the batteries and the power pack so there is option number one with using the hand warmer and because some people may have another hand warmer that they can't get the pad into such as in S. Boston all is not lost because we can also address that so how do I set up my hand warmer in order to use it to replace the functionality of something like a thermocell device the easiest way is to take your fuel bottle and I like to pre-measure the amount so I'm not spilling the fuel out of the hand warmer 15 mils is a good amount which is what this smaller bottle is and of course the more that you can oxidize in terms of the terpenes the more repellency that you'll get I would start out seeing if you can tolerate about 3% so I might just put in a random amount and you can just experiment to see what works so actually I probably have more than 3% in there now but then what I would do after I've got my terpenes in add your fuel put the small cap on and then use that to fill your hand warmer and it will be evenly oxidizing those terpenes creating fumes and repelling the mosquitoes the other option you could do would be simply place some of it directly into the hand warmer in advance uh, maybe a couple of mil I would do it before I added the fuel otherwise if you add the fuel and then put it in if you've added too much fuel the terpenes won't absorb into the reservoir material and also they'll probably stay at the top and then oxidize right off the bat and then stop working so if you're going to do it that way put them in first and then add your fuel but I would recommend the best is just to mix it in and if you want to do one liter of fuel in advance then you could measure in perhaps this whole 30 mil 
amount into one liter of fuel and then fill your hand warmer from that one liter reservoir of fuel that you've created. If you're curious to know what those pads heat up to, and in fact one of the reasons I got these pads in the first place was with the consideration that perhaps they could be used as electronic hand warmers in the winter and the temperature with the probe inside there which is what we're looking at on this lower temperature here it says 208 right now uh, it'll range between 190 210 in that area so just like you could use the hand warmer in the summer to repel mosquitoes you could use the electronic mosquito repeller in the winter to warm your pocket up so the choice is yours the longer I leave the probe in there hotter it seems to get up to 217 now I've actually used LED flashlights in my pockets as a source of heat from batteries and they work better than the power packs that people sell because they can draw up to 3 amps um, this guy seems to be climbing all the time 220 so experimenting with that in a pocket as a hand warmer is something else then that can be done in the future if you were to use something like this and you wanted it in your pocket keep in mind that lithium ion cells do not like high temperatures as may not your pockets so your this pouch I got from one of the small six hour hand warmers and you could just nicely fit that into that pouch and then have it isolated from your battery pack and that should allow the battery to remain safe without getting overheated and it'll also allow you to easily switch out the battery and in the case of this other style I think that would be more problematic however you could still fit it in to the pouch and then put this in your pocket or even just put it in your pocket like this I think the distance between that and that that battery is not going to overheat the situation with the other one could be more of a cause for concern if for example in your pocket it ended up kind of in that configuration with something 200 degrees touching that battery which would not be a happy situation you wouldn't want to have a battery blowing up in your pocket or catching on fire which they could do if they vented so again isolate this from the battery and then you should be fine
Thank you.